This is tarmac. And I got the idea for this painting because I kept having these dreams, these recurring dreams. And they were very uh, powerful and scary for me. The, uh, in the dream, this giant jumbo jet would just be hanging over the landscape. And I'm small and I'm looking up at it and I'm terrified that it's gonna crash and sort of horrified, it's a, it's a terror dream. And then it, it just goes over the landscape, over a ridge, over the hill, and it disappears. And I don't know in the dream if it's crashed or not. And it's a terrifying dream. And I kept having it. And it could have to do, like symbolically, I was in therapy a lot, and I was in therapy, and the therapist thought that it had to do with like one's aspirations and one trying to stay, go higher and above, and then fear of crashing, and fear of failure, um, possibly. But the gist of it was that I was working on the painting to try to exercise the demon of the, of the dream. So it was a way to get rid of the dream. And I had a little, uh, I went and bought a DC-10, I think, a little DC-10 uh, fuselage of a, of a little jet, a model, model airplane. It was about this big. And I used that to look at, to, to set up what this shape would look like. Um, while I was working on the painting, there was a jet crash in Dallas where the only thing that was left was this rear end, the, this uh, rear end section, the tail section, and it was just sitting at the end of the runway. So I actually flew down and I flew down and, and did studies at, at the location um, in Dallas at the end of the runway there. So this landscape behind is very specific place, very specific to Dallas. Although you'll notice as in many of my paintings, there is a, a little dome of the rock. Uh, uh, I, I had spent a lot of time in Israel, and so there's uh, little suggestions of otherworldliness beyond what you're just seeing. When I was looking for this grouping of how to, how to compose this grouping, I actually was visiting my parents down in Columbus, and I saw a, uh, an accident scene uh, that one of the local photographers had taken. I don't know if it was Mike Haskey or one of the local uh, photojournalists had taken. It was black and white, and it was in the newspaper, and people were leaning over this gurney and the ambulance drivers were all there. And so I, I actually used that little black and white photograph. That's probably somewhere in the archives as well. And I used that to, to, for this setup. And of course, I re, repositioned everybody and, and used different people. My brother was dying of cancer when I did this painting. And so he had, um, <clears throat> he was in and out of chemo. That's him in the orange jumpsuit. I put myself directly behind him. That's me in the blue jumpsuit. So you see the, the blue and the orange becomes like the stripe on the plane. So it, it's, you, the plane itself becomes symbolic of the self somehow. So you realize it's a psychological uh, interpretation of the self. Over here, you see a, a guy that's sort of taking off. Uh, he's much like on the runway himself. He's like a soul, a lost soul from, from the accident. You see some victims here. This is the, the figure without his pants. This is the figure that when you have a dream and you're vulnerable out in the world, you don't have your pants on. Um, that was also a recurring dream at the time. But um, I, I was telling my father I was doing this painting. And I said, you know, I'm doing a painting of a plane crash. And uh, that it was um, a powerful dream that I had all the time. And he said, well, that's just like real life. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, don't you remember that time we were fishing? We were out at the end of the airport runway in Columbus. And there was that pond there that people used to go fishing there. And you, of course, you know, weren't fishing because you didn't like to fish, which is true, I hated it. And so I had walked around the other side of the, of the lake while my dad was fishing. And then the first jet I'd ever seen, a giant jet came and it was going across the lake and it was flying to me on my side of the lake, it looked like it was gonna crash into me. It got closer and closer and closer. I didn't understand what a pl plane landing, what a jet landing was about and it was just coming closer and closer. And then it went right over my head and landed on the tarmac up above where I was standing. So the dream was an actual memory, which I had completely blocked out. I didn't remember it all until my father told me the story. So um, after I did the painting and I learned what had happened when I was a kid, it, the, the dream went away and I haven't, haven't had it since. So the paintings are really an opportunity for learning. You learn about yourself, you learn about your life you learn about the subject matter that you're, that you're painting. Um, my brother passed, this was 1986, my brother passed two years after this. This figure? I think that's like a somnambulist kind of figure. Like that's a figure that's dream walking in a way. I think he's sleepwalking. And he's somewhere between consciousness and unconsciousness. And 
Um, you know, I mean, he, he looks a little like a jet. He's got a, you know, a conical kind of hat from his hood. So it's like the nose of a plane. So, you know, he's, and he's silver and white. You know, he, he looks like, and he's on a runway. So he's like somebody that's sort of in the Bardo in between. But, you know, we all sort of wander around in that place, the Bardo in between. This bottom part was, uh, you notice how thickly painted the bottom part is? I don't do that in a lot of paintings, but um, some of these earlier paintings in the early mid 80s I did, and I would just wipe off my palette at the end of every day of painting on the bottom of the painting, and that built up a texture. We were taught at the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art, your painting wasn't good unless it had a lot of texture. So I was just proving this is gonna be good. Um, but then I turned it into, you know, detritus and wreckage and mud and water. Um, you know, there are some nice passages down in there. This figure here uh, is, a, is an echo of this figure here. Uh, you'll notice that the, he has legs. There's a guy back here. And then all of a sudden he doesn't have a head and a, and a shoulder and a body. I started that figure. This figure was completely in there. And if, you, if we find that black and white news photo of the accident, I think he was back there. But he, his head wound up being too close to the gesture of the hand, um, which was too important and the shape of that wing. So I wound up and I actually, if the painting was on the cover of uh, American Artist. I was standing in front of it for a photo and I'm working on it. And I think that American Artist is actually in the brain. But in that, in that photo in the magazine, uh, he's still in there. He's still in the painting. Um, but I took him out there and I kept working on the painting and then finally I like, moved on to the next painting. I moved on to Damascus Road or whatever the next one was. And I just forgot to take his legs out. Forgot, completely forgot. So I went until we rolled it back out and hung it here that I was like, oh, I forgot to take his legs out. But so the child, uh, you know, I think I was, had a lot of fear. I had three, three sons. And uh, at this point I would have only had uh, two sons, but I, I had fear of losing a son. And so that was, I often would like put a child um, in a dangerous situation to sort of deal with that feeling of how horrible that would be to lose a child. So that, that's what's going on in there.